Hey guys, happy Friday. I hope you guys are having a great week. Uh, welcome back to Reach Out Reptiles. My name is Garrett Hartle. And as far as how my week is going, uh, well, those of you who follow me on Instagram probably already know some of the behind the scenes stuff that was going on, some mishaps with some of the super dwarf breeding. But if you missed it there, then you're gonna get it here. I've got a whole video about it and I debated sharing this, but I think it's best just to kind of show you guys what was going on with that and hopefully you guys can learn something from my mistake. Thing about giving the shelf is when they use that instead of the lay box. Whoa, hi. Good morning. No biting, okay? Come here. Easy, mama. Don't squeeze them. Look at that. Not of imaginary. That many. I think we got him there. Ah, oh, there's some little bit odd development with this clutch. Yeah. Got a broken egg. Okay. If you want here, just set it down. Turn it off. Broken egg. Yeah. Oh gosh, yeah, we're off. Tore up down here. guys we have a much less than ideal situation here but I figured I'd share for a teachable moment these eggs are a little bit weeny I mean they're gonna be okay but the shells are very thin so it probably could have used more calcium for the female uh, in feeding her when I fed her up so but I have one two three burst eggs that are leaking just from moving her up off the combination of thin shells, moving her off that shelf, and then she just squeezed the crap out of them as I was trying to get her off. So these eggs here, um, I don't want to just pull them apart like we normally do. The shells are so thin that I think they're um, they're gonna rip if I do. But here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this dental floss in a sawing motion to separate these really delicate eggs. Normally you can just pull them apart nicely, but we need to be extra careful here because I do not want to lose another egg. So honey, what we're gonna to try to do is cut around this one right here. Well, here, let's get this guy off the top first. And just easy, easy, easy. It's not going. It's not? Needs lubrication. Here. It's pushing on the other one. Losing it. Ew. Alright. We got baby kids over there. Garrison, help your brother. This is the chaos of my life, guys. Saving baby snakes, entertaining baby kids, trying to teach you guys something in an obviously stressful moment. I hope you guys appreciate this. I don't know. Oh, oh. What? All right, you're actually. Am I cutting it? No, no, you're doing well, but I got this off. So hold on one sec. Hold this egg just like this, okay? Put these oh, down. Oh, baby, don't die. Okay, got the rest of these guys off. Okay, here we go. Got it? Yep, do so what I'm gonna do, and you saw it? what I'm gonna do is, no, I'm gonna just no. kind of peel, you know, just gently pull apart on the area where I want her cutting also. Go ahead, sawing back and forth. It's a little bit hard probably to see on a video, but these eggs feel different than your typical nice healthy eggs. Okay, we're almost there, hold on. Let go. Stop for a sec. Let's work it from. Let's work from the top because I get a lot of glue up here. I see guys using this to pull eggs apart, like if they, you know, were away for the weekend and a snake laid or something. 
And just for the record, you can see how much effort this takes and how delicate it is. I think that's a bad idea. If they lay in a clump, leave them in a clump. There we go. Okay, we're free. Ugh. So, this guy's good. We're gonna put him in here. All right, so this is what we got. You can tell, not the greatest looking clutch, but I expect these to hatch. That's six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and would have been 21. And then we had about six slugs as well. So, not ideal, but hopefully the ones that pull through, you know, we we're able to save some of these guys. And I don't know, that was just a, a bad situation, especially when you get a bunch of infertiles throughout the clutch. It's hard on mom, hard on the bag, on the eggs. So, yeah. Well, that one wasn't fun to say the least, but you know, you can't let success go to your head. You should never let failure go to your heart. Um, the one big thing I learned from this, you know, I think the reason why her eggs, uh, the clutch in general with so many infertiles and the thin walled eggs and stuff is because with super dwarfs, you know, you cycle them very heavily with food, those females. And that female for me has been a great breeder. She took last year off but normally she lays in February like clockwork. Well, this season we had some very unseasonably cold weather early on in the year here in Pittsburgh. And I think that kind of triggered the breeding cycle for her without the food cycling. And so she was still in a period where she'd been feeding fairly lean and you know optimally I'd be able to give her a few large meals before she laid so that that could go into egg production meals with extra calcium um, and get those you know additional nutrients into her so that she can use them for egg production and that didn't happen one other tip that I'll give you is that if you save the eggshells from eggs that hatch uh, while the egg cells are still soft and pliable wash them out and cut them into little strips. You know, usually I do like a one and a half inch by one and a half inch squares. And then you can save those things. They'll dry out kind of like a potato chip or something. Save them in a bag. And if you ever get a small tear in an egg for any reason, you can soak those extra pieces in water and the skin that is able to allow the egg to breathe will still work. But you can take that wet piece and stick it over the torn part of the eggshell and it works just like a band-aid so that was just one other little side tip i figured i would throw out there i mean what happened with those eggs those things were too far gone i mean when she squeezed them as i was pulling them off of that shelf they just completely ruptured so anyways 18 good eggs is uh nothing to cry over that's for sure I just feel really bad for that female having to go through that experience, but she's been moved into a new cage. There's no egg smell and she's already eating again, uh, which is a good sign. They don't eat as they normally, you know, maternally incubate their eggs. So that's a good sign that she's on the road to recovery. Thank you guys for joining us this week. Um, have a great weekend and we'll catch you next time. <music>